Commander? Cotton, is that you? It's been so long. Cotton, it's only been a year. What? You sat on a deer? I love riding, Kelby. No! Uh, Ilya, come and hit the reset button on Cotton. Where am I? I hate the both of you. Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, welcome one and all to a nice, lighthearted, fun discussion answering one simple question. Is Monster Hunter World worth playing in 2022? Either for someone who has never experienced Monster Hunter in the past, someone who has played other Monster Hunter games but not Monster Hunter World, or even for those of us who have played World Loads but just not done so in a long while due to being a bit burnt out from it being the spotlight of the series for as long as it was. The easy answer answer to all of these questions is Yes, Monster Hunter World is an absolute masterpiece and will always be worth either visiting for the first time or revisiting at a later date. It is the most fluid that Monster Hunter has ever felt, the most alive that the world has ever been. The endemic life system was an incredible little extra layer. Monster Hunter Rise is the newest Monster Hunter game, and in a lot of ways I think it nails making the combat approachable and fun. However, it is an incredibly different feeling from the combat in Monster Hunter World, which was already an incredibly different feeling from the games that released prior to it. In that sense, every single Monster Hunter game is worth playing for their own reason, even now, each providing a unique challenge and experience. But Monster Hunter World holds a very special place in my heart. Monster Hunter Rise is the currently active game. It's the one that still gets event quests, and will have an expansion coming in a few months. World had the Iceborne expansion, but stopped receiving further updates before Monster Hunter Rise released. That said, that doesn't mean that there is less content in the game, it just means that the player base is less active. The player base is less focused. Many people would jump right to the new thing, and so much of World's player base was lost to Rise. And when I talk about focus of the player base, what I mean is, if an update comes out for the game, 90% of the people who are playing the game will immediately want to do that update. As a result, the community sort of pops off around that event, and it can even make a game with a lesser player base feel like it is busy as hell because everyone's doing the same thing. As a result, it can seem like World doesn't have as many people playing it, but the truth is, plenty of people still are. So if you're questioning about whether or not this is worth it to play this game in 2022 is about how active the community is don't worry, it is still absolutely there. And even then, honestly, the game is a masterpiece, even if you don't see another hunter, for your entire journey through. The only negative that I really have to say is that it's unfortunate that anyone who is just now experiencing Monster Hunter World by default gets the Iceborne update affecting the content prior to Iceborne's release, by which specifically I'm talking about the Clutch Claw. Dinkleberg. Genuinely though, th this one mechanic feels like the only thing that I ever hear people bring up as a negative for Iceborne and, well, the true reason for that is because Iceborne was fucking great, I'll say it, there was just so little to actually nitpick about in the game and be properly critical with, and many of the things that actually did have issues with, such as the Guiding Lands endgame mechanic, the developers actually fixed over time to the point that the Guiding Lands are now actually fun, relatively controllable, and quite quick to mess around with. If anything, due to those changes and some others, I would argue that Iceborne is in a better state now than it ever was when we were actively playing it. It's weird to explain what I mean, but obviously, the the hype for the game isn't right now where it was before, it's not a new game, people have experienced it, but imagine if right now, today, you had absolutely zero prior knowledge of Monster Hunter, or at least of Monster Hunter World, your first experience could either be base Monster Hunter World, then waiting for Iceborne, then going through all the DLC as it slowly releases, the pains of the guiding lands in the original state, of weapon rebalancing, event quests getting added in small batches at a time, seasonal events every once in a while, or... What if your first experience with Monster Hunter is Iceborne? Fully complete, sealed off, all DLC included so you can go through one at a time, all event quests included, all patches and fixes included so the game doesn't change while you're actively playing it. Gathering hubs do change aesthetic every two weeks. It is simply a complete package. I, I absolutely adore the way that I was introduced to Monster Hunter, but a part of me can't help but imagine how incredible it would feel to just dive into fully completed Iceborne with absolutely no prior knowledge or experience. And so I pose to you a thought. 
why not do that now? Obviously we have the experience, so you can't do that part, but this video is aimed at any of us who have either not played World or simply haven't played World in a long time. Maybe since Monster Hunter Rise came out almost a year ago, maybe even longer. We are currently around three months out from the release of Sunbreak, and if you want to keep those three months infused with Monster Hunter in some way, and maybe infused with something fresh, something different from the Monster Hunter that you've been playing, why not create a brand new character in Monster Hunter World and see what it's like to just go from the start to the end with no restrictions restrictions, no time gates, nothing holding you back. To me, that is absolutely worth it. Convince a friend or two or even three to come along for the journey, and it's a done deal, an unstoppable tirade of fun. The story of the game is still the best in the series, at least as far as I'm concerned, and no world has made me feel this connected. No world has felt this alive. I will never get tired of even just wandering around Monster Hunter World maps, even without actually hunting things. The monsters are lovely all around and it still holds up perfectly well. Rise may be newer than World, but it didn't make World obsolete in any way at all, it simply diverged. The maps in Rise technically offer more available space, you can climb pretty much everything that you can see, and so the entire 3D space of the map is usable. However, the result of that is that a lot of maps feel designed around that concept, o obviously they are, maps that feel almost created for ability to go through them, which again, they are. But what I mean is they feel almost less natural, less immersive, more just large spaces created as tools for you to have fun within. Rise is the arcade version of Monster Hunter World. It is fast, it is big, it is loud, it is impactful. The endemic life is in set locations on the map every single time, and it is super condensed enjoyment of the monster hunting formula in a recognizable shape. It is built to let you pick up the game, have a great time for even just a few minutes, then be able to put it down and then do the same thing later and you'll still feel satisfied. Monster Hunter World comparatively is like a marriage it is a sit-down restaurant compared to a drive through It isn't just by default better. After all, a steakhouse can have a drive through if they choose to. It's just an undeniably different experience than sitting down in the place. If you have played Monster Hunter Rise but never played Monster Hunter World, you are absolutely missing out on what I believe any Rise player would love to bits. If you have played older Monster Hunter games but not tried the newer generation games, why not give World and Iceborne a chance now that the game is fully complete, expansion, event quest, DLC monsters and all. There really is no better time. Those of us who have played the whole game before, well, if you have been playing other games for a while, you may be surprised just how fresh and enjoyable this game will feel in comparison to your memory. After all, one consistent thing about Monster Hunter players is that a lot of us consider it almost like a lifestyle, in the sense that if you play Monster Hunter, you generally don't have a massive amount of time or space in your head for other video games. Sure, you can just play it for the first time, kill experience of each monster, but when it all truly clicks in, when the hunting loop starts to make sense in your brain, the game just sort of becomes addictive. You just want to keep playing Monster Hunter. Every Monster Hunter fits that bill in its own way, and the fact that they fit this bill differently each time means that you could literally jump from one Monster Hunter game to another Monster Hunter game, never playing another series in your life, and still be happy with the variety that you have in your game choices, and even more specifically, in your weapon choices, as the weapons have changed so much from day one to their current forms in Monster Hunter rise. Today, I've been here to lobby quite specifically for the one game that I believe currently fully encapsulates that Monster Hunter experience. And so, put simply, I 100% believe that Monster Hunter World is worth playing in 2022. Arguably, if you haven't played it ever before, it is more worth it now than it ever was previously when it was actively releasing. The price is lower, the content is complete, so what are you waiting for? I've been Gotten Dinosaur, and this has been a little chat about whether or not you should be booting up Monster Hunter World today. And in my opinion, you probably should. What are your thoughts on the matter? What to you made Monster Hunter World so unique? compared to the other games in the series. Like if you like the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye